cross-server process sharing allows you to share a common process in project areas that live on different servers. In this video, you'll see how to use cross-server process sharing in CLM. You'll see how to provide a process from a project area, how to consume that process in a project area on a different server, and how to customize the process in the consuming area. Before process can be shared across servers, the server that provides the process and the server that has projects that will consume the process must be able to talk to each other. This requires that each server have a friend and a consumer key for the other server. So let's take a look at those keys. I have two servers set up right now. The first is at clmwb1.ibm.com and the other is at clmwb2.ibm.com. On this first server, if we look at the outbound friends, we'll see that I have a friend for my consumer server at clmwb2.ibm.com. And for the consumers inbound, I have a consumer for the consumer server, and I've set a functional user ID on that. Likewise, over here on clmwb2.ibm.com, in my friends outbound, I have a friend for the provider, and in my consumers inbound, I have a key for the provider, and again, I've set a functional user ID on that. Now that we've seen how the servers are configured to be able to talk to each other, let's take a look at the actual project areas. On my provider server, I've created a project area called My Provider with the Scrum template. Since this is an existing project and I've got the process all configured the way I'd like it, I want to allow other project areas to consume process from this project area. In order to do that, I come down to Process Sharing and I click Allow Other Project Areas to use the process configuration from this project area. Click OK and Save. Once that has saved successfully, I can start consuming the process in other project areas, even project areas that live on other servers. So I'll come over to my consumer server now and create a project area that will consume process. When I create a project area that I know is going to consume process from another project area, I use the unconfigured process. This is an important step because it is what allows this project area to consume from another area. I click Save to create the project area. Now that that's been created successfully, I can actually start consuming process. So I come down to the process sharing section and I click use the process configuration from another project area for this project area. Click the change button and I see that a list of applications has come up. There are multiple applications and I know that in this case I want to take the provider which is my CLMWB1 server. I'm prompted to log in to the other server, CLMWB1. And once that happens, my provider shows up in the list of project areas. I select it and click OK and save. The project area has been saved and cross-server process sharing is getting set up. Now I have the success message that tells me that cross-server process sharing has been initialized. That's a great thing. Now that cross-server process sharing has been initialized, I'm able to use this project area as I would any other. The first thing I want to do to get my project up and running is to add some members. So I'm going to add a member named Wayne, and I'm going to assign him the Scrum Master role. You'll note that these available roles all come from the Scrum process, which is being provided by my process provider.
Now that Wayne is a member of the project, I'm going to log out as my administrative user and log back in as Wayne to show you how the process actually works. So the project's all set up. Now let's prove that Wayne can actually use the project. We'll look at the project dashboard. And you'll notice that this also is, is a sprint style dashboard. That information is coming from the process provider. And if we look at the work items, the different work item types are coming from the process provider. So Wayne's going to create a new story. And there's our category. Click Save. And the work items created. So you can see that there's a lot of information coming from the process provider. But it's also possible to configure that information at another level within the process consumer. So let's take a look at how that would work. I'm going to go back to my project area. And as Wayne, I'm going to change the process here to give, the, to give Steve, a team member, permission to change the project area itself. So I'm going to go to the permissions, and I'm going to select my team member role. And you'll see that here under process, the team member currently has no ability to save the project area. So I'm going to allow team members, Steve in this case, to be able to modify a project area. And I'll click Save. Now I will log out as Wayne and log back in as Steve to show you that that configuration change took hold. I'm now logged in as Steve and I'm going to make a small change to my project area just to prove that I can do it. The save was successful, and the reason that it was successful is because Wayne granted permissions in this project area, overriding the default process that's coming from the process provider. So there you have it. Process sharing across servers. You saw how the servers were set up to be able to talk to each other, how to create a project area that provides process, how to create a project area that consumes process, how to use that process, and finally how to customize the process. Thanks.